Hello everyone, just Gordon here and welcome to this tutorial. The biggest inaccuracy at the moment in my Bakesberger recreation is the terrain. Because back when I started the project, we did not have height maps yet. And nowadays, we do. But how do you make a height map of the zoo you're trying to recreate? Well, that's what we're going to be looking in today. I found a great height map tool that lets you align your height map perfectly with a real world location. And there's some other neat tricks that you can also use height maps for to aid you in your recreation projects, which I'll be showing you uh, today as well. So even if you're just interested in learning all about height maps, this tutorial will teach you just that. This tutorial is a bit of a follow up to my how to start your own recreation project tutorial, which covers how to get a Google Maps image to scale with your Planet Zoom app, and we'll be continuing kind of where that tutorial leaves off using this grid file over here. We're also going to be using the same tools used in the tutorial, so I would recommend that you watch it first before you jump into this one. But if you're just interested in having a look what I'm all about, <laughs> then uh, you can also keep watching, of course. So if you're up to speed, then we can get started right away. So you have your grid file set up and you know exactly which area your planet zoo map will cover. How do we get a height map of this exact area? Well, the first thing you want to do is go to this area on Google Maps. So over here we have the Bristol Zoo. So we're going to go to Google Maps and search for that. And uh, of course, switch to the terrain mode so we can actually see all of the details that we want to see. And yeah, there it is. Let's actually turn this off so we don't have that ugly red border. So next up, we want to get at least half of our grid image, that's this one, we want to get at least half of that in view. We're going to take two screenshots, one from the bottom half and one from the top half, because if we try to get everything into view at once with the way that Google Maps zooms, we're going to have a lot of unused space around our zoo, which is just going to result in us losing a lot of detail. Of course, we don't want that. So that's why we're going to be making two screenshots. So I'm going to position ourselves over here at the bottom. I got this nice recognizable point, which is this bend down here that we can see over there. And then, yeah, the zoo is in the center. So that is just what I can use for positioning ourselves of the bottom half. And once we're positioned, we can turn off the uh, Google Earth view and go into the map because we need actually the URL of the map to be able to generate our height map. So we're going to copy that URL and we are going to open the link in the description below, which will get you to the height map tool. This is black magic. <laughs> it is an Excel document or, or Google Sheets document that allows you to paste in a URL of Google Maps and it will automatically generate a height map for you, which is in the exact same location as your uh, Google Maps map. <laughs> so as we can see over here, we got the river, we got this little hill over here, and you can see all of that kind of reflected in the height map. Right, so this is the exact same location and it's perfectly aligned. So don't move around on either of these pages because then they won't be aligned anymore and you basically have to start over. So to make our height map usable in Planet Zoo, we are going to need to change some of these settings over here. But before we do any of that, we are going to need to have the other half of our map as well. So I'm going to go to Google Maps and I'm going to duplicate this tab over here so that we have uh, both of them. And I'm going to move ourselves up. My other recognizable point is this house over here. I know that that is the top of my image. So this is basically the top half of our map. So I'm once again going to switch back to map mode, copy the URL, go into the generator and generate it and we're going to open that one. So we want to make sure that we keep these two apart because I don't want to accidentally put the wrong map somewhere. You probably will find out, but yeah, I now know that these two are combined and these two are combined. They belong together. 
So let's change the settings of our height map to make them easier to use in Planet Zoo. We are going to need to turn off auto exposure so that we can edit the minimum and maximum elevation over here. And for these values, for the minimum elevation, you want to set these to whichever of the two has the lowest value. In this case, they're both zero. That's because of the river, which might actually be a bit of a problem, but we'll, we'll see about that. And for our maximum elevation, we want to make it the minimum elevation plus 255. So in this case, well, zero plus 255, of course, is simply 255. So that is what we need to make it. But say your minimum elevation is like 60, we're going to do 60 plus 255. And that would be 315, just as an example. So when you do this, most of the map will turn almost a single color. That is very normal. You wouldn't expect to see any whites in here because that would mean that there's actually an elevation difference of 255 meters, which would be pretty insane. <laughs> so yeah, when it's all kind of one grayish blob, that just means that the terrain changes are nice and gradual. And what we just did basically is by setting these values 255 meters apart, that will make it so that these values actually match Planet Zoo as well, where a change of one is actually a change of one meter. So now our height maps are technically ready to be added to our grid file, but uh, the grid file is not ready for our height maps yet. We are going to um, make this our height map template. So I'm actually going to save this as a new file and it's going to be Bristol Zoo height map. Of course, you can name it whatever you want, but um, the first thing we're going to do with our height map file is that it actually doesn't need to be this high of a resolution. The 5000 by 5000 or 10,000 by 10,000 something um, was there just for you to be able to reference each little grid piece uh, to like a lot more detail than you would with a much lower resolution image. But a height map file is only 1024 by 1024 pixels, one pixel for each square meter of the planet zoom map. So we're going to lower the resolution of this image by quite a lot for it to fit in that, but we're not quite going to make it 1024 by 1024. And let me quickly explain you why. Basically, this is a, the size of a height map image, 1024 by 1024 pixels or in-game meters. Um, but this red area over here, that is actually the buildable area of your Planet Zoo map. And that is also the same resolution as our grid file. It is 1000 by 990 pixels slash meters in the game. This little blue stroke at the bottom, that is actually some space that Planet Zoo reserves for your entrance, which is like 8 or 10 meters wide and that's also why the buildable area isn't actually square if you included that blue area then you would have a square area and this green stroke around it that is actually a little stroke of terrain that is around outside of your zoo's borders which you can actually recognize in the game over here is your zoo here's the border and here is that little stroke of terrain which still has long grass on it and over here that's where the editable terrain ends and uh, that is also where the height map ends. So the height map goes actually outside of the zoo border into this area because this is technically editable terrain. Like with the free build mod, we can actually edit this. It's just that uh, normally you can't and actually the height map can't edit this either, but it does get included in the space of the height map. So later we do need to take that into account that this is actually the area of our grid and this area around it is the area of our height map. Now, how do I know this? Well, I tested it, of course. Over here is a height map with four arrows pointing at those borders of the zoo. So over here, there's like uh, 12 meters on either side. And over here, it's a bit more because that's where uh, that blue stroke is also. And if we open that in Planet Zoo, well, that's actually the map that I had open. Uh, you can see that those arrows get cut off because the height map can influence outside of that area <clears throat> but out there is stuff for the height map you could see that the arrows were painted there on the height map but they don't show up in game but if you 
extend them using some barriers over here, you can see that they cross each other at the border, just like I had drawn them. So that's how I know kind of how the borders and the height maps and stuff works. Um, it's kind of strange that the height map is actually bigger than the actual map, but it's the way it is and we have to work around it. So if you don't understand anything of what I just said, that's fine. <laughs> it's not that important. All you need to know is that we need to take our height map image and we're going to go to image resize and we're going to make the width 1000 pixels. Make sure you maintain aspect ratio and there we go. That's what we need to do to make it kind of align with the height map. And after that, after you've done that, you're also going to go to canvas size. You're going to uncheck maintain aspect ratio and you're going to make the height 1000 pixels. Anchor it at the top so that that space gets added below. And that's how we add that little blue stroke there. It's just to make sure that our map is perfectly aligned uh, with the planet zoom map and with the height map later on. So the screenshots that we're about to take of the Google Maps tabs that we have open are actually of an area larger than uh, what we have in our grid file here. So let's image canvas size one more time. We're gonna anchor it at the middle. Um, you can maintain aspect ratio for this one, it's not that important. And we're gonna do something like 3000 by 3000 to add some more white space around it for adding those Google Maps screenshots. Trust me, it all makes sense. <laughs> And uh, lastly, we actually don't really need our grid for this particular file. Um, I hope you ha still have your grid file saved separately uh, because yeah, we're gonna get rid of the grid. You don't actually have to, you can also keep it. It can still be useful, but I am just trying to keep the file clean for the sake of the tutorial. So now we can fit our Google Maps images onto here. So we're gonna start off with the bottom one. We're going to go back into satellite view so that we uh, can actually compare it to our other image and uh, align it. And we're going to press F11. This will put you into full screen mode. And it just helps take in a slightly larger and more seamless uh, screenshot over here. So make the screenshot with whatever method you prefer. I like using Windows Shift S that will open your computer's snipping mode and you'll just be able to snip a screenshot just like that. Of course, you can also use print screen or you can go into research and search for uh, the snipping tool. It's another way you can make screenshots. Uh, I just like using the keyboard shortcut because it's the fastest. And yeah, now we have our screenshot snipped. So we're gonna make a new layer, paste it on there and we're actually gonna lower down the opacity of this layer that will help us align this screenshot because yeah that's the next thing we need to do we need to make sure that this is aligned perfectly with the screenshot below it so let's do just that and so just take some finicking around but i'm sure you can figure it out eventually the key is to look for some like high contrast things like this, where you can really easily align it over the other image. I think I'm pretty much perfect right now. Yeah, you can see there's some slight, slight inconsistencies with stuff like roads, which are nice and straight lines that you can follow. Uh, those are really good. There we go. Something like that should be pretty much perfect. The one or two pixels off really doesn't matter. So there we go. We've aligned our image. And if you remember, the uh, generated height map is of the exact same area. So if we just press F11 again to close this one and go to our height map, we can again press F11, close the controls, have as little UI elements on here as possible. And we can just make a snip of the height map make a new layer and paste that in there. And we need to just overlay this perfectly with the Google Maps image. Like so, and now our height map is in the perfect spot. So now we can repeat the process for the other half. So we're gonna press F11 to be full screen mode. We're gonna go to the other half, go into terrain view, F11, 
wait for the full screen message to disappear so that it's not in the way. And we're going to take a nice snip of that. And something you can do with the second round of this is this image has the same proportions as the one that we put down. So instead of finicking around with the scaling of it a second time, we can actually just scale this exactly to the other image like that. And now all we have to do is put it in the correct spot. So I'm going to lower the opacity. I'm actually going to get rid of the other two layers just so that we can see what we're doing a little bit clearer. And yeah, let's just put this in the right spot like so. I think that is pretty much perfect. So you set that and take our screenshot of the height map. Same as before, exactly the same. New layer, put that on top and align it perfectly with Google Maps. And there we go. So now with these two combined, we actually have our full height map. If you want, you can blend these two height maps together a little bit by going to the eraser tool, putting down the hardness and making it nice and big. Okay, that's a little too big. And then just doing this to kind of fade out the bottom of the top image. And that's just kind of gonna, that's just, that's just gonna help blend them together a little bit better. Overall, they should be pretty seamless, but this just makes sure that they are uh, even more so. So after that's done, we can actually merge these two layers together and then we'll have just one image for our height map. But the height map we have now is actually much bigger than the area we need. So let's cut it back down to size. So we're going to go ahead and go back to canvas size again from the middle. And now we are going to set it to the height map value of 1024. And there we go. That is our height map. So let's save that and actually see what this would look like. Because if we turn this into a height map right now, um, you'll soon realize that we are not quite there yet. Because you'll see um, that your height map is probably in a giant pit and that's because right now the lowest value in our height map we made it black and black in a height map will go to the lowest point possible and in planet zoo that is well down into the ground so the lowest point will be as deep as you can dig in planet zoo um, which if you want to know is 128 meters down so what we want to do is our lowest point, we probably want it to be somewhere on the same level as the zoo's border. So how do we do that? Well, we just need to make sure that the lowest point is that number I just mentioned, 128 meters. So we need to raise this entire height map by 128 meters. And that is actually something that can easily be done with paint.net as well. So in our height map file over here we're going to add a new layer and we are going to pick a color and the color is going to be 128 128 128 and that will basically if we paint bucket this into here well right now we can't see it but let's just put that on top for a second this is essentially a height map that is an exact flat map basically the flat map that we all know and love from planet zoo just itself um, so what we want to do is we want to take our height map and kind of put that on top of that flat map. So instead of starting at the bottom of Planet Zeus map, starting from that flat map. And the way we do that is simply by going into the layer properties of our height map layer and turning it from normal to additive. And what that does is that this will add the color values of this layer to the layer underneath it. So black has a value of zero so it will add nothing but anywhere there is some elevation it will actually raise our map from that flat part instead of the bottom so this should actually be our final height map although i'm guessing that that river is going to mess things up a little bit but we'll see 
So let's save that once again and see if it worked. So now instead of raising the terrain from down at the bottom, it raised it from here. And actually made the map a little bit too high. <laughs> Um, but I'll get into how you can fix that in a moment. But this is basically how you do it. Uh, normally this would give you pretty much a perfect map. Um, it's just that that bottom of the river was the lowest point. So the bottom of that river is now flush with the border of the map. So relative to that all of the terrain got pushed up. But in most cases this should actually work just fine. And you should have your completely functional height map right now in here so if that already worked for you then you can take the grid blueprint from the other tutorial and start adding that into here and you can start working on your recreation but i've got a couple more tricks to show you that can help you and yeah let's start with the first one which is lowering the map again <laughs> So what happened that caused our zoo to raise itself into the sky is this black spot over here, which is a river. And that is why our minimum elevation got set to zero. The lowest point in this map was actually a river with zero elevation. Now that river isn't even on our map anymore, but of course it was there when we made it. So it's still affecting us now. So in short, when there's something outside of your height map that had cause that minimum elevation to go down that much um, you will have raised borders like this and a similar thing can happen when you have a lowest point in the middle of your file let's say we made a zoo over here over here seems to be some kind of pit so if this was our zoo there would be a pit in the middle and the borders would be raised so what you can do in situations like this is lower just like how we raised the terrain up by changing the color of that background layer uh, we can also lower it back down so we need to kind of figure out how low we want it to be so over here seems to be the lowest point of our file do we want it to go that low or do we want it to more be on this height i'm not quite sure our zoo is going to be over here so you're not really going to notice that drop really but hmm yeah, I think I think I want to just get it to about this level. So over here about we seem to have the lowest point of this ridge. Let's pick this spot over here. So we're going to measure how much we want to lower down our terrain using this regular old building pieces. So we're going to align that up there and now we're just going to go down as far as we need to. And there we go, it's exactly 18 4 meter wall pieces. So, well, 18 times 4, that's what, 72 meters. So we want to lower our terrain by 72 meters. Sure thing, easy to do. So we just go back into our file and go to that layer that we set to 128. And we're going to lower that down by 72 meters, so 128 minus 72, 65. So we're gonna make this 65, 65, 65. Paste that and you can see we darkened the image and that will have lowered it down to what we want it to be. And there you have it. Now you can see that the terrain has been lowered down accordingly and this side is now kind of flush with the border over here. It looks like we maybe shouldn't have high, uh, lowered it down that much. We might want to increase it again by another few meters, but you kind of get the idea, right? If this happens, you just follow the same steps, just measure how much you want to increase the height by. So one, two, three and a half, looks like it. Yep, so three times four, that's 12, 14. So we want to go back up by 14 meters and then this side will be flush and this will stick out again. It's just kind of figuring out what you want it to be. Of course, this is something that you will notice. Uh, this is something that you may or may not. It, it really just depends on what you want to do with the, the terrain and stuff. But um, yeah, that's how you can raise and lower the terrain to get it flush with the borders of your zoo, if that is something that you want. 
Another cool thing you can do with your height map is add markers. Just like using the grid, adding markers can be a super helpful way to determine where you should place certain objects or buildings into your zoo. If you go back to our file and undo to uh, unflatten it, um, we actually don't need these two layers anymore. We just need these uh, three over here. And we're going to just go back to our satellite image over here. And we're going to add a new layer all the way on top. That is going to be our marker layer. So to add a marker, you're going to take the brush tool, set the brush size to something like five and uh, increase the hardness back to some of like the default value, I think is 75 ish. And we're going to set our color to something like 10, 10, 10. You don't want to make this some kind of extreme color like white, as that will just create a huge pillar of terrain that will spike into the air and just be a pain to remove. Uh, I find that 10, 10, 10 works just fine. The marker won't be too tall, but it will still be noticeable. And a width of about five, again, uh, is not too wide or a hindrance, but if you make it too small, like one or two, um, it would actually not show up in the terrain too well. It will look kind of buggy. So that's why I like to go with something like five. On our marker layer, we can use this brush to draw stuff, for instance. We can draw out where the corners of the zoo are, just like this. And that would be very useful. We can even say like, oh, this is where the parking lot goes. Something like that to follow the road. And now if we were to load that in, or well, <laughs> after making it again an additive layer like that, if we were to load this, yeah, this height map, we will have these little pillars showing us what the corners of the zoo are. Pretty useful. But of course we can do even more of it. Instead of just adding little markers, we can also just draw out entire buildings. And maybe you like to use a straight uh, line tool for this. So you can draw out <laughs> the exact borders of buildings like this. And that way you will know exactly where to place these buildings. So you don't really need to finick around with the grid too much, <clears throat> which can be kind of challenging. Um, I do like to open up the grid image next to this one though, so that we can actually see what the hell we're doing. So yeah, then you can see like, I, I wasn't sure if this was a building or not, but it definitely is. What you can also do is uh, actually draw these markers out on your grid image <clears throat> and then copy paste them onto this one. Let's actually try that. So we make a new layer because otherwise it will be kind of difficult to copy paste. And we start drawing out our markers over here. So I'm just gonna do this entire side of the zoo and then we'll see what that ends up like. All right, so there we go. We have one side of the zoo and we're just gonna go ahead and control A, control C, and then over here we can control V that into a brand new layer. Let's keep our canvas size because we just need to resize this to the same size of the grid image over here. So we need to make sure that it overlaps this and this. There we go. That's how we can decide our markers on our main image and then copy paste them onto here. So then you can see a little bit more detail uh, in what you are actually marking out. So I would recommend adding not too many markers because it's going to get a little bit confusing, you know, to see what is what. Um, but you also want to add, you know, as many as you may need because this is the only moment in which you're going to be able to add them after you've you know generated your zoo with the height map that's it you're not going to be able to add more of these markers after that point you will rely purely on the grid and of course you can use the grid to make some billboards and stuff as well but yeah i think this is a really cool way to uh, get some really big things in position um, right from the start i think it's uh, super super cool so i'm going to generate this for you guys to show you what it looks like so we're going to merge these together and set the layer to 
additive. And why didn't it do it? Let's multiply <laughs> additive. And uh, yeah, let's show you guys what that looks like. All right, so there we go. We've loaded into our zoo and we can see exactly those markers that we placed. So we know now that these are the, why is it always snowing? <laughs> um, we now know that these are the borders of the zoo. Over here is the borders of that parking lot. And these are those buildings that we marked out. So this is one side of the zoo. These are some other buildings. And if you were to add more markers, you would kind of see all of the buildings all across the zoo pop up. So yeah, that's just a really, really cool way to um, get a little bit of extra information. And if you were to actually put in the grid right now, you will see that they should land in about the, the right positions. So let's actually check that. So we can see if I draw this cross across the grid uh, that we are cutting off this part of the building over here perfectly. And we're cutting through this building uh, kind of down the middle. And if we look over here at our Planet Zoom map, we can see the exact same thing. So we're cutting through this building over here and we're cutting through this building down the middle. So this is a super precise way to kind of plan out where buildings in your recreation need to go. And all you have to do is now like put down the build pieces and then with the terrain tools, maybe not that size of it, uh, you can take down the uh, marker again and bam, you're done, you're good to go. So yeah, really nice thing to do in combination with the grid to get some references down. And that all works because of how accurate we were able to create the height map with all our weird shenanigans at the start. So yeah, that is a, a really cool thing you can do right there. And that kind of leads me to the last thing I want to bring you home with, um, which is the last thing you can do with your height map. Uh, check it, double check it, make sure that it's accurate. If you followed all the steps, as you can see, it should be accurate, but it never hurts to check. As I said in my other tutorial, you are going to be putting so much time into this project. So what's a little extra time right now at the start to make sure you have all the basics right? So put down your grid, cross mark it, cross reference it, see if all your things are in the right place. And if they're not, try to figure out why and try to fix it and check if the heights are correct. And how can we do that? You may wonder. Well, if you were to go to Google Earth, and this is a program uh, you probably are familiar with, but you can actually download Google Earth for free and it's, it's super useful. It has a lot of differences to Google Maps. And one of them is that when you're hovering over an area at the bottom right corner over here, you can actually see the elevation of the area you are hovering over. And we can use that to check whether or not our height map is correct. So I want to know, uh, I want to pick two kind of recognizable points on our map and see if they are um, kind of accurate in height relative to one another uh, using Google Maps. So I'm going to pick the zoo, of course, we know where that is, and the top of this hill over here. So on Google Earth, we can see that in the zoo, the elevation is 69, nice, 70 meters, roughly. And the top of this hill over here is around 90 meters. So a difference of roughly 20 meters. So let's go into Planet Zoo and check if our height map has the same difference over there. So once again, we're going to take some wall pieces and we're going to make a little tower of 20 meters. So one, two, three, whoops, four, why is it doing that? <laughs> I know how this game works, everyone. So one, two, three, four, five times four is 20 meters high. So this area should be 69 meters and the top of this hill should be, we're not moving it properly. <laughs> the top of this hill should be about 20 meters high. And as we can see, our pillar is perfectly aligned there. So there's exactly 20 meters between the bottom over there and this kind of top part over here. So that tells me that yes, our height map is very accurate to real life and um, we can trust it. Now I assume this will also be the case for you because I'm pretty confident that my method that I've developed here for this tutorial uh, is very reliable. But if you find yourself in a situation where 
you checked, double checked, and it doesn't seem to be quite accurate, there are things that you can do about it. Without having to start over. Basically, if your terrain seems to be too high, so let's say that your mountain is twice as high as it needs to be. I'm exaggerating, it will probably not be something like that. But what you can simply do is take that additive terrain layer that we created and lower the opacity down. So if we were to lower this by about 50%, that would make the terrain half as high. So you just need to play around with that to get it to something that fixes whatever is wrong with your terrain. If your terrain is too low, what you can do is duplicate that additive layer. And as you can see, it will become a lot brighter. This will basically make it twice as high. And then you can take one of those two layers and play around with the opacity of that one to get it to a height that you need it to be. So just play around with that until you get the right height. Again, it should be accurate from the start. Like I'm pretty confident it, it just will be, but this is what you can do to fix it if it isn't. And I think that right there kind of sums up everything you need to know. <laughs> I hope the tutorial was clear and you were able to follow it and you found it helpful. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I wish you the best of luck with your recreation project and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>